every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord. We want to thank you for giving us this name this morning. That we can run unto you, dear Father, and you are saved in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the power in this name to you, Lord. There are so many names to your Father, but to your name stands out, King of all the glory. We honor you this morning. We came to this place this morning because of this name, Abba Father. Therefore, speak to us, dear Lord, O oh, King of all the glory. Through your name, in the name of Jesus Christ, we worship and magnify you and we declare that you are good and you are faithful above Father. We lift our nation to you this morning. We want to thank you for the nation of Kenya. This nation to your Father. You know it to your Lord. Before Kenya, you were our Father. Therefore this morning, we declare that Kenya is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because of your plan shall prevail concerning this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Father that you have brought us as a church. But Father, this morning, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your wonders to your Father. Oh God and our Master, we are not yet there, but we are almost. And therefore this morning, we send ourselves to you. That you come and have your place. We are here because of you. We know this day you are going to encourage us. This day you are going to heal. This day you are going to leave them that are downcasted to your Lord because you are here to bring a difference in our lives. Without you, we are nothing. But with you, dear Father, we are more than conquerors. We send ourselves to you, to your Lord. Speak to us, dear Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may have your seats. Thank you, worship team. The Lord bless you. Good morning, church. Karibuni sana. How are you feeling? that you are almost touching the, show, the anchor of your neighbor. How are you feeling? It, there's warmth. Yes, you are looking forward, just as our brother has said, you are looking forward to have a Kesha. Yes. Iyo itakuwa moto. So father, kuja mapema. Because I think space will be an issue. So please come early. Yes, I want to take this opportunity this morning to introduce myself. My name is Beatrice Waitaka, and I'm born again. I love the Lord so, so much. I want to thank our bishop and our mom, Pastor Alice, and the pastoral team and the leaders of this church, and you that came to this house this morning for giving me an opportunity to share God's word. I'm a messenger this morning to declare the oracles of God because we know we live because of the word. Not because of ourselves, not because of our hard work, but we live and we are what we are because of the word of God. This morning I want to share on a topic, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And before I read the scripture, I want you to ask yourself, am I a sheep? Am I among those sheep? Yes, you might be a sheep this morning, but you are, are you among those sheep? that know the Lord's voice. Because we are many even this morning, we are as different as our names. Therefore, I don't know where your faith is this morning. But the Lord wants us to know this morning that his sheep, they know his voice. Therefore, if he is your Lord and your Savior and your friend and your firstborn and co hire together with you, you must know his voice. Because there are so many voices through the time that you are living now. And the voice that is speaking very loud that other voices is the voice of Corona. But this morning, it is my humble cry that one day in this nation, just the way we look at the tariffs every evening, that out of 5,500 or 5,500 samples, 260 were positive. I'm looking forward for that that we say that out of 6,000 500 give their lives to Jesus. That's where we're hiding to. We are so close to our TV. Even we want to know how many died. Instead of looking how many were healed. Can we have that urge that we look forward? That out of 10,000 crusades that were, took place this weekend, there's a campaign that's are going on, that 500 give their lives to Jesus. In the book of John, 10, 26 to 29. The Bible says, but, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them 
and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. The sheep's ears are connected to the voice of the Savior. If you are born again, your ears are supposed to be connected with, the, with your Savior, with the voice of your Savior who died for us. Remember, for us to be born again, there was a sacrifice. Jesus died for us. Therefore, you're supposed to be connected with your Savior, the one who died for you, not the one who born you, not the way you, where you come from, but you're supposed to be connected with the one who died for you. And he said, it is finished. He paid it all on the cross and said, it is finished. Friends, just like a mother, if babies could cry outside, three babies could cry outside there, believe you me, the mother here will go out because she can identify the cry or the voice of her child, of her child, not his child, of her child. Fathers may not, but us, we have a connection. And somebody told me this. The, the, the reason we are connected is because when you give birth to that child, the umbilical cord you disconnected, or disconnected from between you and the child. So that connection of the umbilical cord, when this child used to feed for those nine months, that was, that's why it makes a difference between a father and a mother. And that's why when you hear a cry, mothers raise up. Somebody told me this, that those who have aborted, I don't know how to it is, I, I'm... I'm I need to be, could be corrected. That those who have aborted, when they hear the cry of a child, maybe this child was full term and you aborted. When you hear the cry of a child, chances are you hold your tummy. Because there's something telling you that life, you carried life one time in life. I don't know how true it is. But that is another story for another day. It does, it, the Bible does not say that Jesus' sheep are perfect. In behavior, but they hear his voice and they follow him. Know that we are, because we are born again, we are perfect. We all have our shortcomings. But when we hear his voice, we follow him. Some people will ask, but what about this or that thing in my life? Or in the life of that person who says that he's born again? We all fall short of the glory of God. But one of the things that stand out is that we know his voice. Even those who, are, who got born again, and sometimes they backslid when they're in the bar drinking, believe you me, they can hear the voice. Because one day, there was a connection. And that's why I said, at a backslide, at a front slide. And with the time, and a front slide, and goes back to the fold. One preacher said, a lot of churches are trying to pressure resource they are not having. And Bishop preached here, I think two weeks ago, and said that if somebody came to this church, during the sec when we are exiting from the second service, that same, Iyo to 5,000. Were you here? Did you hear that? That Iyo to 5,000, and you're not even 1,500. You see the exaggeration? And that's what churches are doing. They are trying to pressure so many things that we don't have, that in our church, we have four services. In our church, I think now we are almost 10,000. Friends, it is time we speak the truth. Those 10,000, how many here the voice of God. How many know the voice of God? We might be here 10,000. We might be here 5,000. But maybe only 500 can identify with the voice of the Lord. Are you among those that identify the voice of the Lord? Bob Jones, he's a senior American evangelist, said, you've got to do more than assisting or supporting a dead dog to prove he's alive. You have to, you have, you, you got to do more than assisting. Can you imagine assisting or supporting a dead dog to prove that it is living or it is alive? Friends, if this dog was alive, he could have had the voice. And because it doesn't wake up, me, I have a dog and he knows my voice. So if this dog was alive, he could have had the voice of the owner and he could have stood up. But this dog is alive. There's nothing you can do. Is it supporting? Is it lifting it up? Is it putting it on, on a stretcher? It cannot stand because it is dead. Friends, we made love. But my prayer this morning is that you may know 
the voice of your maker. You may identify, you know, so those many voices, you may identify the voice and say, this is the voice of my maker. We are teaching new believers. I'm a new believers teacher. We teach new believers and some that are here. But unless they've got the real thing, which is the real thing, that all the teaching in this world is not going to transform their lives. The only thing that can transform their lives is that they must be born again. And when you are born again, you hear the voice of the Lord. You preach somebody, take them through lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. Before lesson four, they are drunkard. You find them on the way, they are smoking. When they see you, they want to finish your cigar. But let me tell you, you need to be born again. After you are born again, you identify with the voice with that voice because what will make us reach to, the, to where we, we are going it is the voice. Think of this there are nations that people don't gather for services like where we are gathering this morning what is made, making them to be in salvation up to this time it is the voice they hear every day they're telling them I'm still with you, I will not leave you nor forsake you because there are no gatherings what will make you stand? If today you are removed from this nation, taken to another country where people don't gather like we are gathering this morning if you don't know the voice. You must be born again to hear his voice. God chooses, he draws, he holds, he raises, and nobody is lost in the process. When the Lord gets hold of you, he raises you, he transforms you, you can never get lost in that process because he's the alpha and the omega. My sheep hear my voice. True sheep are eager to hear the master's sheep. What, you, what are you eager to hear? Because you only need to hear one thing, the voice of the Lord and the voice of your maker. In the book of John 13, 35, John 13, 35, the Bible said, by this, this is, we are coming from a, 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 another scripture. But that five says, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples. When you hear the Lord's voice, and I hear, believe you me, we can be able to love one another. That is the outcome. When you hear the voice, and I hear the voice, when we come together, we love one another. And that's what Jesus said, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Not when you fellowship, not when you help one another, but when you love. And love is a command. It's not a request. It is a command. Love one another. This is how people looking on you can know about. No, this is why people looking on can know about people they are watching. Friends, when you go to a soccer, soccer match, you don't look, you watch. People are watching us. They're not only looking. You look once. And then you keep on watching. People are looking at us. You are Christians. Do you love one another? Is one look enough? No. When they look at you, then they keep on watching because you love one another. Do they love one another? That is all the world is asking. Do they love one another? It is not whether they are regular in church attendance. No. Though it is good. Is it because they are religious? or tithers, or pillars. Attending church is a very good thing, but it is not a Bible sign that you are born again, or you are saved. It is not a Bible sign. What is the sign is that you hear and know the voice of your maker? You stand out among many, because everybody is doing this. You are not everybody. Everybody is sell selling this. You are not everybody. Think of this, and this came to, to, to me very, very, very handy. That look at Christians promoting condoms. Christians promoting Munaniskia. <laughs> or a Christian selling alcohol or working in a pub. Or a Christian selling cigarettes. And ask somebody. The same hands that are holding the Bible, are they the same hands that are about to pick a pick a packet of cigar? No, not one billion. Because nobody, but not everybody buys a whole packet. Because some are New Zealand billion, New Zealand moja. The same hands. 
But when you know his voice, believe you in me, there must be a demarcation. You can go to church and hate everybody there. You live in a world of your own. So church attendance does not indicate that you are saved. The Bible standard in looking at other people for salvation is, do they love one another? Because the voice will tell you, this one is my ship. We have read in John 10, the Bible says, but you do not believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. When you know him, you follow him. Jesus said, but this means that a lot of people in church attend us, maybe in our church, maybe in our family, are not Jesus' sheep. Yes, we are born again. We are born in, in our family of five or six, but not all of us, chances are very high, are not Jesus' sheep. Maybe it is two or three. Jesus wants people to hear his voice and follow him. Those are who the same people are. We do not enter the kingdom of God by doing the will of the Father. Get me right. We do not enter the kingdom of God by doing the will of the Father, of Jesus. But if you are saved, our sincere commitment is to be doing the will of Jesus' Father. Jesus' Father. From the heart, we are traveling in that direction. We want to do the will of the Father to who? To Jesus. Otherwise, we don't have any real proof we are, we are saved. James, the half-brother of Jesus, said, Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead. Show me your faith, I show you my works. Being alone, yes, a man may say, you have faith. You have faith and have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I show you my faith with my works. Because you believe and bring a difference. James 2, 17 to 18. James 2, 17 to 18 says, In the same way, faith by itself, if, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith. I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds. And I'll show you my faith by my deeds. When you know God's voice, he has an expectation. Yes, you are my sheep. You know my voice. He has an expectation. How do we think about expectations and actions? A workless faith is a product of of an expectation, expectationless life. I come again. A workless faith is the product of an, an, an expectationless life. And an, an expectationless life is merely an empty existence. A workless faith is the product of an expectationless life. And an expectationless life is merely an empty existence. Those that are employed here, we go to work every day. Why? Because you have an expectation that at the end of the month, we'll receive a paycheck. Am I right? What if today the company says, please come and help without a paycheck? Will you report on Monday? No. You go because you have an expectation. The Lord has an expectation out of the faith that you have. We go to the doctor when we are sick because we expect him or her to know how to make us healthy again. Nobody goes to visit a doctor. No. You go because you want him. You have an expectation that is going to make you once again be healthy again. We exercise regularly or at least we try, because we expect the work to benefit our bodies, both now and in the long run. That's why people run all over. You go to the gym because you have an expectation that when you exercise, your body now and in the long run will be fit. Expectation always produces some sort of action within us. When you have expectation, it will produce some action within us. Buana Actually, 
Every man shows his faith by his works. That is just how it is, as simple as that. God can see the faith in our hearts and know if we are saved. But we can't see in the hearts of people. Only God. That's why the heart was not put here. It is hidden that only God can see it. Let's look at four benefits of knowing his voice. Four benefits of knowing his voice. Voice number one. His sheep hear his voice. That is verse 27. His sheep hear his voice. Friends, I don't know what you heard. Did you hear the voice or you heard the echo? What did you hear? People are going through stuff because instead of hearing the voice, you heard the echo and you followed the echo. But today I'm here to assure you that there's a turn around. You can come back and hear his voice. As they follow him, they must know his voice. You cannot follow a stranger. You follow him because you know his voice. The brand of ownership on the sheep is obedience. The brand of ownership on the sheep, it is obedience. You must be obedient. Do you want to know whether a person is saved or not? Then see if he or she is obeying Christ. Our ears must be open to his voice. And we see this in the book of Proverbs 20 verse 12. Proverbs 20 verse 12. The Bible says, The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made even both of them. The hearing ear, you heard the voice. And you know that is his voice. And then you see the works of the Lord. The Lord has made even both of them. And a good example is Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, he was up on the sycamore tree simply because he was of a small stature. He could not see Jesus. But Zacchaeus had the voice of Jesus. The voice of the shepherd. It reached out to Zacchaeus. This was the first day Zacchaeus heard the shepherd's voice. And that voice brought a change of his life. Brought a change for his destiny. Brought a change in his family because of hearing and knowing the voice of God. Again, all that are Christ, hear his voice in the time of duty. Think of Stephen. Stephen heard the voice of the Lord. Friends, you hear the voice behind you saying, Isaiah 30, verse 21. Isaiah 30. The Bible says, your own ears will hear. Verse 21, sorry. You are, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Even those who are backslided, friends, you can bear me witness, they had the voice, but they could not obey. You went your own way. The voice is telling you, turn right or turn left because this is the way. But you said, even me, I know the way. But it became too late. Those are that Christ, let's hear the voice of business or of pressure. They hear the call of strange women. Proverbs 9.17 Stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. Stolen water is sweet. And food eaten, in, why not in the open, is delicious. But you do not hear the voice of Christ when he says in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take up, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and humble in heart and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What a promise. My burden is light. We are carrying heavy burdens. But the Lord is encouraging us this morning. Come to me. 
Not come to us, but come to me. And I'm going to lift up your burden. The Lord wants to, to speak with you every day to illuminate your plans and guide you. He promises that you will never be lost. Why? Because you hear his voice. You will fall and wake up. You will run short of grace, short of his promises. But he's promising us this morning that he will never, never let us, make us to be lost. Those that are Christ are in solitude and there's only one voice that they hear so clear and loud. It is the voice of Christ. It doesn't matter what you are going through. But there is a voice telling you, keep on keeping on and keep hope alive because I am coming. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. What a promise. Even what you are going through now, the Lord has promised that he has overcome the world. It is part of the things that are in the world, but he has promised he will never leave us and not forsake us. Number two, I know them. I know them. I know them. I'm glad somebody knows me. Bishop asked us, was it yesterday? That how many knows the president? So you all know a president. If I ask you who is the president of Kenya, who is the president of Kenya? But does he know you? Does he know you? But I'm glad Jesus knows me. Aren't you? That Jesus knows you? I'm sometimes in I am sometimes misunderstood and have to explain myself to people. My name is Pastor Beatrice. Pastor Nani. Maybe there was a pastor who messed in that place. So when you go and introduce yourself, my name is Pastor, that alone keeps them off. But Jesus doesn't need an introduction. He knows me and I know him because I know his voice. However, I need to explain to any, anything. I never need to explain anything to him. He knows me because he knows my end coming to my beginning. He knows when, when I'm putting up an excuse. He knows when I'm avoiding an issue. He understands me because he knows me. Does he know you? Do you have to introduce yourself? That my name is Jane. My name is Mary. Before the Lord, he knows you because you know his voice. Number three. And they follow me. And they follow me. I believe in the external security of the believer and the security of the make believer. Yes, we are born again, we are believers. But you're so concerned about the make believer. And thus Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The word follow, it carries our life. The follow. When you, you fall, please stand up, continue follow him. When you run short of his grace, please stand and follow him again. Let's follow him. It is just as simple. Follow me. If the shepherd called his sheep on an, on, when standing on a hill, and maybe down there were 500 sheep, and when he called the sheep, only 100 came. What does that tell you? That among the 500, only 100 know his voice. The rest are sheep, but all sheep call according to our father. It doesn't matter how many we are. But what brings the difference is when he calls, we can identify his voice. Are you his sheep this morning? Number four. And I'll give them eternal life. That's verse number 28. I will give them eternal life and they will never perish. What a promise. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Friends, when Jesus gives us eternal life, that means we don't earn it and don't work for it. It is a gift. When somebody gives you, it means you don't earn it. You don't work for it. He gave us 
Those that know his voice, he gave them eternal life. And they not perish. He gives it to them. It is eternal life. It is forever. Not for some time, but forever. If it plays out in a week or in a year, or until they sin, then it is not eternal life. But for eternal life, it is eternal. Now and the days to come. They are not really his sheep if their life does not last forever. If you live for some time, you are not his sheep. But his sheep, his sheep lives eternally or lasts forever. The sheep may be in danger. The shepherd will protect them. That's the beauty. You have a shepherd. They may be scattered, but you'll gather them up again. They shall never perish. What matters a lot in this human race is the life after. We are in salvation because of the life after. We persevere what we go through because of the life after. It is not about now, but then. Even in the grave, when he calls his sheep, they will hear his voice. And a good example is Lazarus. When Jesus called him, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, because he knew and he identified himself with the voice of Jesus. And even Mary said, you are friend. Can you imagine? You are friend. Lazarus is sick. Now the sheep, would they backslide? Yes. We have an enemy. We are not ignoring that we have an enemy we will backslide. Will we perish? No. Because when you backslide, that voice will tell you, wake up. It's time to wake up. You not perish. Friends, the sheep may be in a pig, pig, pig pen. When you do a pig pen, pig pen is where pigs are, are kept. The sheep may be into a pig, because of what you go through in this life, you might find yourself in the pig pen. Ukikula na but there has never been a sheep that stayed in a pig pen. There's a difference between in and staying. You might find yourself in a pig pen, but don't stay there. Sheep and pigs do not live together, and they will never live together. The sheep is always a sheep, and a pig is always a pig. Nobody can pluck that sheep out of the Savior's hand. No enemy, no man, no created being can pluck that sheep out of the Savior's hand. Because you know the voice. Allow me to share this as I conclude. One day, a man, he, he's married. This married man was going out of the country. And the wife and the friends saw him off at the airport. And they parted ways, and the wife went back home. But lo and behold, the flight was canceled. And this man went back home. Those times there were no Uber, so he took a taxi and went back home. When he reached his home, he knocked. And you know those are married. You, you know the names that you call one another. Pastor Bran is exempted from this. You know the name that you call one another. Babe, sweetheart, others honey, others strawberry, others, nobody's called salt, nobody's called pepper. Those sweet, sweet words. So this man standing outside, he called all those names. But the wife said, my husband went to the U.S. And I saw him off at the airport. So you're not my husband. The husband stayed there. And you know he has his, all the luggages. All those stuff. You know, people that have gone to the U.S., you know what you carry. So this man called for hours. Let's do with them, me have four children. I can meet a mama Mboro, mama Wangoi, mama Wanjiko, mama Joseph. This is what we were saying. I saw off my husband to the U.S. 
so you're not my husband. This man was met there by thugs. He was beaten and died. When she woke up in the morning to open the door, she met the body of her husband at the door. What is the secret behind this story? She never knew the voice of the husband. And you are here this morning. How many times have you crucified Jesus back on the cross? Because you saw off your husband. You have never identified the voice of your Savior. I want to close us to close our eyes. And let's go the journey of our salvation. You got born again, and along the way, you missed to identify the voice of the Savior. You got born again, and along the way, he called you Jane, Anne, Peter, James. But you said, me? I saw him off. How many times have you crucified Jesus on the cross? But this morning he's saying, follow me. I still love you. Follow me. Because I hold your destiny. Know my voice. Because when you know my voice, even in the grave, where people will go and bury you and go back to their places, I will remain with you in that grave. Because when I call, you will hear me because you know my voice. The beginning of all this is to know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Because these days are numbered. And David said in Psalms 90 verse 12 that give me wisdom that I may number my days. Friends, these days are numbered. What will make, what will make us to live in the other world? It is knowing his voice. Do you know his voice? What did you hear? Did you hear the voice or you heard the echo? It is high time you go back. He's saying, come back. Come back and follow me. Because I'm not yet done with you. You are still a work in progress. And maybe you're here this morning. You've never received Jesus Christ as your personal savior. That is the starting point. For you to hear his voice, you must accept him to be Lord and savior of your life. May he have a place in your heart so that you'll be hearing his voice telling you, this is the way walk in it. Turn to the left, turn to the right. Are you here? And you'd love to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're here, just raise up your hand. I will support you and we prove with you. Are you here? Are you here? You've never given your life to Jesus. Taking this life back to the owner because it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to to your maker. Are you here? And maybe you are here. Along the way, you missed the mark. You missed the voice. And today, you cannot identify the voice of the Lord. You are still born again, but you never hear the voice of the Lord because you cannot distinguish between other voices and his voice. If you are here, raise up your hand. I pray together. Father, we thank you and bless you. We honor you this great morning because you are faithful. Knowing you is knowing your voice. That you cannot follow strangers to your Lord. Some of us, dear Father, we followed butchers. And dear Father, we were slaughtered. But this morning, we want to come back to you. But Father, we thank you because your hands are open. You want to embrace us with your love. We are coming back to the heart of worship. We are coming back to where we belong. We are coming back where we have love eternally. We are coming by that even when we backslide, Abba, Father, not perish because your love, of oh, your love to us, our life. We want to send ourselves to you, to your Father, because this is a journey and we need your voice. This is a journey and we need you to your Father. Speak it to us every morning when we wake up to your Lord. Up to the end of the day, we want to hear your voice because you know hearing your voice is hearing you. And knowing you, dear Father, is life eternal. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.